Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Audi SQ5, then I'll take you for a ride in it. Shut up! <laughs> but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. <laughs> if these sheep will shut up. Be quiet! This is a 3 litre by TDI Tiptronic Quattro. 2013 on a 63 plate, has done 66,315 miles, but I'm using it at the moment, so it will have done more. Fuel economy, urban 37.2 miles per gallon, extra urban 44.1 miles per gallon, and combined is 41.5 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of 5.1 seconds, a top speed of 155 miles per hour out of a 309 brake horsepower, six cylinder, 24 valve engine. Okay. Um, it's got it. It's got the power of a, a petrol, but uh, the fuel economy and longevity of a diesel. Um, we've got the all-important SQ5 badge there, and uh, high-pressure headlamp wash, front fogs at the bottom, front parking sensors, and the the low uh, chin spoiler there. The five twin spoke alloy wheels, the big calipers with SQ5 uh, printed on, the kind of aluminium um, door mirrors, brushed aluminium window surrounds, rear privacy glass, and this uh, roof bar carrier system. Electric boot release from the uh, key, but you still have to lift it yourself. Should be plenty of room in the back there. Nice flat loading surface. There's me. Uh, I'll try and remember to cut some footage of the boot when it's empty, but I'm not sure when that'll be because, as I say, I'm using that and it's got all my gear in. Um, we've got the hard rear load cover there. The two handles, one on either side to, to put the back seats down. So you just pull the handle like so, and it uh, it flops forward. Um, quite quite a good design there. Rear wash wipe the rear tailgate spoiler and then again we've got the rear parking sensors and the quad um, chrome exhaust tips flip the seat back like so and here we go there's a handle on the side here oh, it's, uh, oh that's for you can recline the seats as well a little bit so that's uh, that's quite handy. Um, lovely designer seats, contrast stitching, it's uh, black with light silver grey leather, centre panels, looks really nice in the back, looks really classy. Uh, it's got over mats, rear central armrest, it has Bang & Olufsen um, speakers, so the sound's fantastic as well. Um, plenty of headroom, uh, we've got uh, couple of uh, inset uh, reading lights for the back passengers. I, I don't recall seeing that on uh, any other cars to be fair. Then your coat hangers here and there's also kind of a um, these insets in the roof to put a parcel net or if you've got a dog in the back or, or whatever put the seats flat and then the parcel net up. So again good design. I'll just take you for riding it. The Audi key there. Into the slot, foot on the brake. Press it in, the vehicle will start. First thing to do is switch off the roundabout collision button. Let's just see. Service history. 20th of 10, 2015 at 10,626 miles, Highland Audi. 1st of the 9th, 2016 at 24,207 miles, Highland Audi. 5th of the 9th, 2017 at 32,053 miles, West London Audi. 12th of the 10th, 2018 at 42,964 miles, Wimbledon Audi. 13th of the 10th, 2019 at 
13 to 10 2018 at 42,694 miles. That's uh, Wimbledon Audi as well. That was brake fluid. I just, I just saw something go right past the back of the car. I think it's a sheep, so I'm going to have to be careful. 27th of 9, 2019 at 54,179 miles. Wimbledon Audi. 14th of 10, 2020. 62,774 miles. Wimbledon Audi. And it's done 66,315 miles now, so... Um, not in need of a service. Very, very nice car. As I say, Bang & Olufsen speakers, which is one of the one of the features I like in the car. Um, <laughs> the sound system to me these days is more important than the engine, and this has got a fantastic engine and a fantastic sound system. Let me just see. Yes, there's a... Uh, <laughs> There's the sheep that have been heckling me while I've been doing my video again. So I, I don't really get um, four-wheel drives that drive as fast as this, but then I do. <laughs> if you need both and you like a sporty ride, then, uh, I mean, watch this. And, and listen to it. I'm not going to go any faster than that. I could see the road was clear. Um, <clears throat> but it's uh, there's sheep all over the place. Um, so you just have to take my word for it. It's, uh, it's a, a very, very quick car. As you can see, the suspension is um, not your usual wallowy four-wheel drive suspension it's a sports suspension the twin turbo car that part of the road is been ripped up so um, it's not you know that, that's not a good uh, that's not a good example of, of how it drives on the normal stretch of the road here it's it's Pretty good, fairly quiet, certainly uh, acceptable noise levels to be fair, good level of equipment. We've got cruise control down here which is easy to use, you just click the end in and that's it, cruise is on, knock it up and it'll increase your speed, knock it down, decrease your speed, I think if you knock it away that knocks it off, and if you pull it back towards you after you've knocked it off. I think that's resume if you pull it back. So first first bit is cancel there and then if I pull back yeah that's that's resume. You've got left hand side coolant temperature. Then your rev counter then your information display in the centre speedo and fuel gauge at the right hand side your information display there in the centre I can change that that's knocked it onto media I've also got mode there so change from digital speedo to telephone again back to media digital speedo uh, is, is very very handy because it's precise and no, no like depending on where you look at a uh, a speedo, an analog speedo, you, I suppose there can be a, a difference of a, a few miles an hour. If your uh, tall people drive faster <laughs> through speed cameras than shorter people. Also in the information display, you've got uh, the mileometer, your trip counter, what gear you're in and the outside air temperature it's saying 14 degrees outside it feels cold today i've got my coat on that's your voice control voice activation and there volume and mute 
which you do need because if you've got it on radio every time you get in the car the radio comes on which I find annoying if I want the radio on I'm going to switch it on no I don't need I don't need it to come on automatically right there we go this is certain death corner and uh, one of my viewers who's concerned for my safety um, said why don't you beep when you're going around the corner uh, it's, well they're all farmers around here I'm pretty sure they were up at like five o'clock but if somebody's having a lane at that house on the corner I, I, and they're watching this video then I apologize here we go this the, the steering is you know it, it it's very precise and uh, with the acceleration it's capable of you know you can like side through country lanes if you want to paddle shift on the steering wheel we can uh, if we can if we knock that over I can change gear here we go another just happened to meet him oh there's this the sheepdog with his head out the the side door it frightens me to death there's a narrow very narrow lanes here That's, uh, he's obviously he's in a left-hand drive vehicle and the, the dog sat on the right sticking its head out so right back to the car I um, knock the gear selector over to the left and then we can change using the gear selector if you so desire so that's in manual if I knock it down, knock it back across the drive and then knock it down we're in sport so it will hold it in gear as long as possible before changing give you the maximum range of revs I've never had occasion while I've been driving it to uh, need sport it's blisteringly fast to start off with heated electrically operated door mirrors I mean you are you are tempted to put your foot down to be fair it's it's, it's very comfortable um, it, it's the sound of the engine I like more than this <laughs> going fast it just sounds superb got height and reach adjustable steering wheel as well just should have probably showed you when we we got in and electrically adjustable seats got electric lumbar support which is quite pleasant just say it's just it's just got a real sweet spot there you could uh, I think you could just leave it in third and, and you'd be fine it's bought there just knock it back and into drive dashboard typical Audi very functional and uh, pretty sparse although as I always do complain in Audis they uh, in aeroplanes you have two switches uh, to do one thing redundancy in case one fails you, you've got another one in Audis you've got you've got two switches and a display to do one thing which uh, which really really annoys me the fan the fan switch is there it's quite hard suspension as I said before so you already you like Trying to, trying to get the switch unless you stopped so the switch is there you click the switch and then you show that's what it's set to you know again why would you need to uh, you know by the noise what it's set to it's, when it's noisy it's going fast and when it's not noisy it's going slow so that's not needed but also if you don't do it quick enough it times out and then that becomes your temperature selector so uh, as I say you, you click that comes onto that and then these buttons here 
um, correspond to the fans. That's, uh, that's unusual to see somebody in a camper driving around before dinner time. They all come and camp up here and stay in bed till about midday. So the, the, the rest of the, you know, this kind of eye drive in the centre, it's far better being up there than, uh, than it is down here. Again, design in cars. The, this, there's so many switches now, buttons, they've run out of space on the dashboard or where the driver can actually reach. Bear in mind, it's, you know, it's got to be within reach of the driver, so he's no point putting switches over there. Um, and, and you've got to have cup holders. Everybody's got to have a cup holder these days. And they put the cup holders. I, I got into a bit of an argument with a, somebody who has a BMW because on, on the internet, BMW cup holders are there. And when you go to put the cup in the holder, also the switch that knocks the ABS off is there. And it's quite easy when you put it in to knock the ABS switch off. But also, you've got, the, 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 it's a great car. <laughs> Don't let me put you off. But in the BMWs, you know, you know the tops on Starbucks cups. I mean, the, the, the times they've come off, they're not being on properly, but if I don't use my travel mug and I get a Starbucks cup in this car, I have a habit of leaning on here and doing that. I, I put, put my arm on and that shoots forward. A Starbucks cup there, it knocks the top off the cup and splatters coffee all over the place. So you've got to be careful for that with the cup holder there if you drink as much coffee as I, as I do and I, I get the venti latte. But the worst thing is, all these switches where the cup holder is, like the BMW, the, the next switch to it is the ABS switch. <laughs> it's, these days, I, I think it's the only thing keeping most drivers on the road because there's some awful drivers around and how they stay on the road is down to the traction control and ABS. But again, you, you do have to watch out because there's a few switches there, here. There's, again, you've got your traction control there wouldn't bother me if it blew the stop start switch up because that, that would be doing me a big favour and you've got your parking switches so be careful if you get one and you like Starbucks as much as I do don't there's also kind of a cup stroke flask holder down there but you just you do have to be careful we've uh, We've, we've seen cars, especially one, where they'd spilt a hot chocolate on the centre console and it had blown the, the eye drive here, completely blown that. It had then blown the audio unit and also the screen. So uh, probably by stopping for a Starbucks, um, no change out of three grand. So, as I say, be, be careful and uh, <laughs> look after your switches, especially your traction control one. And you, uh, you do, <laughs> Audi come up with uh, some good ideas. Many years ago, I worked at a, um, a, a Volkswagen dealer. A very very enjoyable time in my life working for Humphrey Moon who's sadly uh, not with us anymore um, but selling Volkswagens and they used to be Volkswagen Audi and then Audi decided that they were, they were too good to be with Volkswagen and split the franchises up so they lost the Audi franchise but they had two Audis left at two Audi uh, five-cylinder 20 valve coupes and they were beautiful cars, absolutely beautiful. They'd had them ages. They'd had them in stock 18 months and they couldn't sell them. And of course, it's, it's mostly, when you're a salesman, it's, it's not what you know, it's what, what you like and, and 
when you're enthusiastic about a product, you can sell it better than when, when you think, oh God, this, this, this is rubbish. So, as soon as I got there, I, I saw the, the, we had a white uh, 20 valve and a grey 20 valve, and I sold the white 20 valve straight away. And uh, we got this other grey 20 valve, lovely, lovely car. And the, uh, there were no alarms fitted then, didn't come as standard. And of course, salesmen are targeted on not just selling cars, they're targeted on finance, gap insurance, which is a waste of money in my opinion, uh, selling warranties, selling blooming uh, leather protection and, and polish outside, all sorts of things in these days, collision damage and alloy wheel insurance, all that rubbish, you know, it's not just enough to sell cars anymore. You've got to sell all the products in the thing to, because there's so little chassis profit, they, they have to subsidize their income with, with all these add-ons. Um, anyway, guy wanted mats, mud flaps and an alarm fitted. And we had a mechanic there who was a real good mechanic. He was the best mechanic and I always used to, if I had any customers um, with a problem, I used to send, him, send them over to him or get him to come over and he'd look after my customers. He was a great mechanic. So this is in no way a, a, um, a slur on him. He, he, was, a, he was a great guy. Um, I, at the time I was taking flying lessons and he used to call me Barry Bond. And every time I went in the, in the workshop, he used to start humming the, the Bond theme. So uh, I got on really well with him. I, I really liked him. But this, this particular day, he was fitting the alarm in the Audi and he'd got the Audi 20 valve on the ramp and it was about so far up while he was doing the wiring and, and you know doing the pins along the doors and he just wanted to test it oh and this is why you don't drive fast in the country there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen uh mrs pheasants sixteen Mrs. Pheasant's in the road and they're, they're not for moving either. They're still not for moving. Having said that, oh gosh, they, they're coming. <laughs> anyway, he needed to test the system. And I'll say one thing about Audis, they're very good starters. And these days, you know when you have to put your foot on the brake or the clutch before it'll start? Well, I wish it had been the same then because he leaned in the car, turned the ignition to just turn the ignition, you know, the, the ignition on. And uh, the car started. It was also in gear. And the car shot off the ramp and into the into the workshop wall, and and wrote it off. And one of the Audi inventions then, you know, people in crashes used to get pinned by the steering wheel because the engine would be pushed back, which would then put the push the steering column and the steering wheel back into your your chest. So that was it. You were a goner. Audi invented this system called Pro Content where the inner frontal impact, the engine and the gearbox would submarine underneath the car and not affect the steering column. So this little, um, I'm gonna let this chap go past here because he looks like he's in a hurry. And I don't want him driving up my backside all over these. Yeah, he, he's in a hurry. So yeah, the, the, the car was e effectively a write-off um, and uh, it lost me a bit in commission. But uh, yeah, so now you know probably <laughs> due to incidents like that. H having said that, we had another, we had another guy as well. Um, he, uh, 
started the car up in the showroom and it was in gear. You'd leave them in gear because again in the old days asbestos brakes and so on, you'd, you'd leave the handbrake on and, and then it would just stick on. If it was slightest bit wet, it would stick on and you'd end up, you'd take, end up taking the wheel off, jacking up, taking the wheel off and hitting the uh, drum with a hammer to release it. So we used to leave them in gear in the showroom and somebody had left the keys in the car and he started the car up in the showroom. It was in gear, lurched forward, straight through the showroom window. So all, all these, you know, all these things, you know, it's uh, it's like that that sign. There was a, I saw a card and it said, "I'm not saying kill off the stupid people. Just take the warning labels off things for 18 months, and the problem will take care of itself." So all these safety devices on cars that eventually go wrong. Anyway, it's a great car. I'm sure anybody who wants a fast four-wheel drive would love this. I like comfortable four-wheel drives. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if you need to get from A to B very quickly, and sometimes there's a flood in between A to B, or mud, then uh, this is the, the vehicle for you. Thanks for watching.